Hey everyone, my name is Veronica. Welcome to my channel. This video is about the fragrances that I wore in the month of July and I have some award categories just for fun on these fragrances. I will also be sharing with you the top three of the month, the bottom three of the month, and then three that might be going out the door. Are we ready? Let's jump in. First category is my favorite blind buy. Which fragrance did I purchase without sniffing or sampling first that I loved the most? If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that probably 90 something percent of the fragrances that I have in my collection are truly blind buys. And so for the month of July, my favorite blind buy is Elie Saab Girl of Now Shine. What I love about this fragrance is that it's a lot like Girl of Now from Ellie Saab, the original that this is a flanker for. It has a nutty accord in it, it's sweet, it's very feminine, and it has this beautiful top note of pineapple that comes through right away and gives this fragrance gorgeous life if you will and it reminds me a lot of like a tropical resort type of fragrance something you might wear out to dinner got dressed up in your beautiful flowy dress and wanted just that perfect fragrance this would be a great one floral fruity sweet sensual girl of now shine the next category is the best and the worst bottles <laughs> of the fragrances that i wore in july so the best bottle is from Amouage, and this is Beach Hut. It's supposed to make you feel like you're on the beach or in a marine type of environment. And I do get like what you would have on a beach that like hot, salty, midday beach air with just a little bit of like a tiny hint of sunblock and a lot of ocean air, a lot of saltiness in this and a lot of like a driftwood or even the smell of like burning wood just a little bit. It's wood that has been dried out for sure, carved up and dried out. It's a really bizarre fragrance, but I like it. The worst bottle or the tackiest bottle in July is a fragrance that I actually do like a lot. I just don't like the bottle and it is Toy Boy from Moschino. I don't like any of these bare bottles from the Moschino line. I think they are just pushing it in terms of like being whimsical and fun. Some people love the bottles and, and that's fine. I find it incredibly tacky, like to an extreme. Now I have some other tacky bottles that you'll see today that should probably have been in this category, but this one stands out to me the most because I wish that it wasn't in this bottle because I love what's inside so much. This is a gorgeous, what I called a, a boyfriend fragrance, which is a fragrance that you wear as a, a female, but makes you feel like you're getting a big bear hug from a guy that's been outdoors and has just that skin smell coming through. Not a stinky smell. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about just that nice sort of rugged skin smell that you get from a man's skin. Next up is the sexiest fragrance that I wore in July. This may be a little bit of a surprise to people and I don't know that my husband would agree with this, but I find it rather sexy and it is Vanille Cafe from Comptoir Sud Pacifique. This is a fragrance line brand that can be a little hit or miss. Some of the ones from this brand aren't long lasting or a little faint or whatever. And then you get some what I call stunners like this one, Vanille Cafe. This smells very much to me like a cup of coffee that has had a little bit of almond syrup dropped in as well as a little hint of vanilla and you're wearing a musky fragrance and then the aroma from the cup of coffee is wafting up and mixing with your own musky scent. Uh, I really like it. I find it comforting. The day that I wore it, I think I layered this with something else. I think I layered it with Coco Figue, which is also from this Comptoir Sud Pacifique line. And listen, you guys, I was walking around smelling like all kinds of tropical snacks. <laughs> Very edible. I think I smelled great. Uh, Vanille Cafe on its own, I think would be very sensual, sexy, just a wonderful come hither kind of fragrance. Also very cozy at the same time. Next, we're going to talk about the fragrance that is the best sort of everyday fragrance. There are a lot that I could choose from the month of July, but I'm going to go with one from the Aqua Allegoria line from Guerlain and it's Mandarin Basilique. I 
just love this. This could have won a number of other category awards here in this video today. This is just a gorgeous orangey herbal, herby, herbaceous, herbal, herb, herby, herbaceous, herbaceous. <laughs> it has basil in it. Uh, fragrance that and the basil just gives this such a novel touch that is so interesting it's non-offensive it's a little like sharp and tart at the same time but not too much not too too heavy in the citrus direction this fragrance has a lot of green in it too i just think it's a nicely balanced fragrance one that would be great for the office in the summer running errands just hanging out everyday kind of wear and 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 it's super versatile in the sense that it could easily go into the evening in the summer and do well on those super hot humid summer days when you're not sure if you want to be bothered by fragrance but you want to smell good under the category of best to gift now it depends on who you're gifting to always with any fragrance so i'm going to assume that it's someone like me who is maybe of a more mature age if you will <laughs> and um, likes feminine fragrances. This is a Beaucheron Tuberose de Madras. Oh my goodness. This fragrance here, you have to like Tuberose, of course. You get a lot of bang for your buck with these uh, Boucheron special line bottles like this. And they're typically on sale on the gray market. Like I think I got this on FragranceNet for under $100 when they're usually maybe twice that or something. I don't know what they typically retail for. And this is just a lovely, it's, it's light, but at the same time has a lot of presence, tuberose based fragrance, uh, floral, soft, round, feminine, um, highly inoffensive. I really like this. The best for the season. So it's July here in central Virginia in the U.S., it is hot, hot, and more hot. We've had days in the upper 90s. Luckily, we haven't gotten over 100 yet, but I know that that's coming. August is the dog days of summer here in Virginia. And the fragrance that I think from my July selection that is really so appropriate for the season. I'm going to go with Notebook Citrus and Green Tea. First of all, this is a super affordable fragrance. I think I got this for in the $30 range, maybe a little bit less, on FragranceNet.com and it's an eau de toilette and it's listed as unisex this has some beautiful notes of tea lemon and ginger at the top which i think are just brilliant for a summertime day they're neither too citrus nor too tea nor too green or any of that it's sort of a really nice balance of all of those and then you get some florals in the middle and even ambergris and musk in the base this fragrance stays a nice citrus like i said tea green note balance on you for the life of the fragrance it lasts i think decently long i think i got a good six ish hours out of this maybe more before i had to reapply at the price point i certainly do not mind respraying at all my best special occasion scent from the july lineup without a doubt is kasamat rosanna by rasazi this is a fabulous fragrance but you need to like real powerhouse kinds of scents. I think that this is a very rich smelling, very opulent, uh, indulgent fragrance. It smells literally like money, like freshly minted bills. It has that kind of thing going on with it. At the top, you get apple and lemon and bergamot. And yes, those notes come through, but what I think makes this fragrance distinct is how the perfumer has managed to add in leather, cypriol oil, and cedar in a way that is not too masculine. There's something like dead on neutral, actually that's a lie, it does lean ever so slightly masculine, but does so in such a way that a woman can pull this off and just smell wonderful. It is a little bit like Bottega Veneta meets Tom Ford's uh, ombre leather, meets some other citrusy kind of fragrance mashed all together in this really what i think is an elegant fragrance 
I think this would be lovely for special occasions, especially in the summer, in the evening, when it cools down just a bit. If you have a black tie affair, if you have a party to go to, if you have some place where you want to smell grown up and you want to smell like money. <laughs> I hate saying that because I know that's a little bit corny, but Kazamat Rosada will be your fragrance. Under the category of biggest surprise is Beyond Romance by Ralph Lauren. I really enjoyed this fragrance. It has a raspberry note at the top and it's powdery as well. And it's just a beautiful feminine scent. My husband loves it. We were both surprised when I smelled this for the first time. I really wasn't expecting much because I didn't love so much the original Romance by Ralph Lauren. But in fairness, I it was 20 years ago or, or something, whenever it came out, I don't remember the, the release date, that I tried that and it was okay, it was fine. I wore it quite a lot, but it wasn't anything special. I picked this up based on good reviews on Fragrantica and I didn't regret it. This is just a gorgeous opening, very highly feminine fragrance and a total surprise. I was expecting that it would be just okay and I would want to send it back. I'm wishing that I had gotten the full bottle the, the 100 ml bottle because i know that i will run through this pretty quickly a fragrance that i do not recommend blind buying at all but that i like and my husband likes is tom ford's metallique i think that this is a strange fragrance in a good way it's different i don't have a lot in my collection that smells like this does it smell like metal yes but at the same time it also smells warm have you ever like held on to a metal railing for a while and the smell that is in your hand, like if it was a hot day, say for example, and the sweat on your hand mixed with a little bit of that metallic smell on a railing and you can smell what that's like. Imagine adding in a touch of vanilla, a touch of powder and a touch of soap and mixing that all up and you might get something like metallique. It is just different. It works somehow. I know that sounds a little bizarre, that combination that I just explained to you, but it actually does work and it's super unisex. It's beautiful on my husband and smells great on me in two totally different ways. It's also slightly woody and a little bit musky even. So, and it, it's, it's weird in that it has equal parts coldness and warmth and equal parts sweet and something like salty or more on the savory end. And somehow it all works together. I really like this, but not a safe blind buy. Definitely a bizarre fragrance in a good way. Now we get to the top three, the bottom three, and the possible chopping block fragrances. In my top three, you will not be surprised to hear Casamat Rosanna is in that bunch. Beautiful fragrance. Highly recommend for those of you that like a fragrance that's a little bit more bold and adventurous. Next is Oud Lemon Mint from Mancera. I was turned on to this fragrance by Dawn at Bougie Fragrance. I will link her below, go check her out. She and her husband, who goes by Photography Guy, hysterical, uh, love this one and they love red tobacco from Mancera. I bought both together uh, for my husband, but you know, hold on, how do I blink at you guys? <laughs> you know, when I buy fragrances for my husband, it's because I like them too and I want to be able to wear them. He wore red tobacco. I wore Oud Lemon Mint on one day and I totally love this. This bottle is gorgeous with this ombre effect. You can't even really see it here, but it's like blue and green and a little bit of yellow down here at the bottom. Nice. It's a little bit minty, a little lemony, but it's mostly like sweet and comforting, a very sort of musky close to the skin scent. I like this a lot. And then my third big winner for the month of July is from Alexandria Fragrances, and it is Hawaii Volcano. This is a dupe for Creed's Virgin Island Water, which I almost purchased because I found a big bottle on discount. It was still like 250 bucks or something in that range on FragranceNet. I added it to cart and then started to explore this one and thought, ooh, maybe I will get that one instead, and I don't regret it. This is such a great summer fragrance it's a party in a bottle as people say they are right when they say that it's lime it's coconut and it's everything delicious and fun about hanging out at the beach for the summer i really like this fragrance hawaii volcano it's a winner totally unisex 
lasts a lot longer than Virgin Island water, which I have a travel spray of. Wonderful fragrance, absolutely gorgeous, but I'm gonna be preferring this Alexandria fragrance version, hands down. Okay, my bottom three, and very quickly, I need to do a disclaimer. Yes, the person who said she doesn't wanna do disclaimers has a disclaimer. And it's about the fact that I'm calling these the bottom three. It's just of the bunch of fragrances that I wore in July. These three impress me the least for one reason or another. I do still like them and they are staying in the collection. Let's be clear. So the first is from Yves Rocher and it is Minoy Eau de Toilette. This is like a gardenia, has Minoy and it has some vanilla in it too. I like this. I don't love it. It was recommended. By a viewer I ran out and got it it smells very much like hanging out on a beach like sunblock um, with a little bit more sweetness in it that tiara flower really comes through and the reason that this is a bottom performer is because it's so faint I wish that it was thicker and I wish that it projected more I even layered this over the Minoy Tahitian oil from the same house uh, and they were okay. They made it through to about lunchtime. Nothing wrong with that, but I just wish that it lasted longer. So in terms of performance, this is in the bottom three. And I also have to say this dent here is just from one wear. <laughs> Me trying to douse myself in it so much that it would actually have some presence. The second one is a fragrance that I really do like a lot, but it's in the bottom three for the same reason. And it is Limon Verde by uh, Guerlain from the Aqua Allegoria line. This is, oh, the fragrance itself, especially on the opening, is so beautiful. It's lime, it's green notes, it has some fig, it has some sweetness in it. It's a really, really delightful scent. Although I have to say I was reading some professional reviewers reviews on this and <laughs> they called it a synthetic mess. Woo! I don't know that I would go that far. My issue with this is I love the opening so much. I wish it smelled like the opening throughout. I do like the dry down and I do like the base, uh, but it didn't last super long. Again, the performance on this I got you know, maybe three-ish or so, maybe four hours or something, and then had to reapply. Not the end of the world. It's still a lovely fragrance. Again, um, yeah, performance. Limon Verde. Do like it. I give the scent a thumbs up, the longevity a thumbs down. So, And my last bottom three fragrance, again, it's staying in the collection. Let's just be clear, but it's Tom Ford's a Fleur de Portofino Aqua. When this gorgeous bottle, you get citrus at the top here and then a violet leaf and lemon as well. In the middle, you get florals. You get orange blossom, magnolia, jasmine, some rose, and in the base, it's honey. Um, what This smells to me like a fresh shower, like what an awesome shower gel would smell like with some florals mixed in. Uh, and you do get a little bit of the honey in the base. I wish that this was stronger and thicker of a fragrance. I wish it was more projecting and I wish it was longer lasting. This on me, again, was another half day kind of fragrance, maybe around four hours. And then it became really, really faint skin scent. And I would like for something at this price range to perform a lot better. Did happen to get this on what? Let's say it together. Discount at the cosmetics company store for quite a steal. So I'm not that mad about it at all. And I do like the fragrance. It's a very clean fragrance. Tom Ford, Flor de Portofino. Flor de Portofino. Flor de Portofino Aqua. How do we do? <laughs> In the last category of fragrances are those that are on the chopping block for some reason or another. Now, if you watch my first declutter video, which was pretty much a fail of a video, <laughs> you know that one of the main reasons that I feel like I need to let go of fragrances is because someone in my family really just dislikes it, like aversion, like, Ugh, what are you wearing, mom, wife, whatever. So I do have to take that into account as I'm thinking about what fragrance to wear for the day. So the first one in this category of fragrances that are just on the chopping block, what I mean by that is I'm considering letting them go. I'm not saying I'm gonna get rid of them for sure, but I really need to think about whether I wanna keep them or not. And it's this gorgeous bottle here. This is Natsumi from Anayaki. 
Anayake, Anayaki. And I like this structural bottle. There's something like interesting, artistic, even architectural about it that I enjoy. Love the color of the bottle, love the orange with it. This is a green aquatic ozonic fragrance. It's very light on the skin. It's one that also needs to be like reapplied a lot if you're that person that needs for your fragrances to have a lot of presence. This is probably, you know, not the one for you. Um, this was not enjoyed by anyone in my family. <laughs> I torture everyone, my husband, the kids. Do you like this? Do you like this? Sniff me, sniff me. What do you think? No one enjoyed this. It has at the top green grass. It says watermelon. I didn't smell any of that. Um, a lang, -a -lang and lemon in the middle. There's lily of the valley. There's rose, there's violet. And I don't know. I really want to like this. This is what I call a very cold fragrance. Uh, and maybe it's the violet in there. The lily of the valley that to me, some people smell as clean, but to my nose registers a little bit metallic and cold. I like this fragrance and I appreciate what it is, but I don't know that it's for me. And it's certainly not for my family. So knowing I have a lot of fragrances that really are enjoyed in this house, I might need to let this one go. Next in the chopping block category is Jones Beach from Bond Number no. 9. I like this when I originally tried it. This has mostly a cologne note in it, which is supposed to mimic sea air and watermelons. I like that it's named Jones Beach. I like that it's Bond Number no. 9. I do like Bond Number no. 9 as a house. Um, this was not enjoyed by my family. They didn't like this at all. They thought I smelled really weird um, and not feminine. It's not masculine either. It's just an odd scent. If I think about it, it smells a little to me like burned rice. You know what I mean? Like if you cook rice too long and then the bottom turns, you know, black and, and crunchy, it smells a little bit like what that smells like mixed with some melon and mixed with some sea salt kind of air. Do I dislike it? No. Does my family dislike it? Yeah. Is it then special enough to stay in the collection? I'm going to have to really think about that. I don't want to give up any of my Bond number no. nines because I just really like the house and I like the bottles. But Jones Beach, you're on the chopping block. Sorry, buddy. And the last fragrance that may need to be in the next declutter, I can't even believe I'm going to say this because <laughs> I really like this fragrance and I like the bottle. Are you ready? Deserade or Deserada, I'm not sure how to pronounce that from Obusan. This bottle, woo! <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like 1980s shoulder pads, 80s, you know, hair up here. There's a lot going on in this fragrance in terms of notes. You can check it out on Fragrantica. But what I get out of this is some aldehydes, some vanilla, some sweetness, some patchouli in the base. I, for novelty's sake, really would like to keep this. But I have to tell you, when I wore this, people in my house were like, "Woo, what is that? <laughs> Immediately, they had a strong aversion to it. And I got to pay attention to that and be like, ah, maybe this one isn't working for me so much. But I like it. And so I may secretly keep it. Deserade or Desiderada, Desirada, Desirada from Obusan. Have you tried this? I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on it. So those are my July fragrances, the best, the worst, the category winners. Let me know your thoughts on any of these fragrances. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care, friends.